Hey, what's going on, y'all? SK Sports Cards here. This is the first video in a series that I'm doing on forgotten card sets. Uh, this would be some short vignettes done on uh, different rare and forgotten card sets that I have in my collection. Uh, episode one here is on the shortly lived Ted Williams Baseball Card Company. Um, this is a product that was available in 1993 and 1994. It only lasted two years, had a very limited print run. Um, it was licensed by the Ted Williams family uh, themselves as well as Cooperstown Collection. Um, not a very well known set and not particularly valuable. Um, cardboard connect, CardboardConnection.com has a little article on this set saying that although it's it's um, useful for learning about the game of baseball and the history of baseball um, there's very little value in the set um, 162 cards in total it did come with uh, two available autograph cards one by Ted Williams himself and this was before he passed away so it was actually signed by him and one by Ron Gonzalez. I don't have either of those. However, I did get this Vita Blue autograph card. Um, I bet Vita Blue at the mall once when I was a kid. And I got him to sign this card. And he looked at it and said, Where did you get this card from, son? And I explained it to him. He's like, Oh, I never heard of it. So, not a well known set by any means. But very interesting and very useful if you want to learn more about the history of the game. Uh, what I will say about it is there's various different checklists within um, this collection. Uh, the main checklist, which I'm showing you here, contains 96 cards. Uh, all historical players. No current day players up until 1993. Um, so there's the legendary Ted Williams as number one. I went through the checklist and found some some players that might uh, be worth something to someone, might be household names that a lot of you may have heard of from baseball's past. Yogi Berra, it ain't over till it's over. There's a legendary Whitey Ford. Legendary Johnny Bench. These were all players who Ted Williams personally felt very highly of. He was very critical of the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, and at one point he set up his own Hall of Fame called the Hitters Hall of Fame. And I'm assuming that a lot of these players were ones that he felt were worthy of being inducted, even if they weren't. There's Warren Spawn, big pitcher back in the 50s. He's a Hall of Famer. Duke Snyder, played for the um, Brooklyn Dodgers. Yaz, Triple Crown winner. The great Tris Speaker. Rogers Hornsby and it's interesting how they brought these to life like if you look at this one of Bob Gibson they got him in color but then behind it they have a black and white uh, photo of him pitching kind of and the color portion is superimposed on top of it not a big fan of this logo here it's supposed to be Ted Williams's signature Ugh. It just, I don't know, it's not eye-popping to me. But keep in mind, this is a 20-year-old set, and cards were different back then. Um, Lou Brock. Bill Mazeroski, not really a great player, but well-known for one thing, and that was his walk-off home run in 1960 for the Pirates against uh, the Yankees. He was the last player to... And a World Series and a walk-off homer until Joe Carter did it in 1993. So if you're a Pirates fan, Mazeroski's a, a legend for you guys, but not really a terrific player. I'm a Tigers fan, so obviously i got to show Al Kaline, George Kell, Mickey Lolich, who's along with Al Kaline, still alive. Ferguson Jenkins, as far as I know, the only Canadian in the Baseball Hall of Fame. He's from my father's hometown of Chatham. Played for the Cubs. Hall of Fame pitcher. Lou Gehrig. Interestingly enough, there was a disease also named Lou Gehrig. Kind of a coincidence, eh, that it had the same name. Just joking. Sorry, that was a bad joke. There's Bobby Bonds, the father of legendary Barry Bonds. Now, Bobby didn't do steroids like his son did. Willie Mays, the Say Hey Kid. And there's Steve Carlton. 
And if you look on the back of the cards, well, let's take Willie Mays. Here's a close-up. The back of the cards it has a little piece on him, gives you his basic biography. And then they highlighted some of his key years. So they showed 54, 55, 61, 62, and 65. They didn't overcrowd it with too many statistics. So they're just showing you some of the key seasons in Maze's career. And there you can see, for those of you who want to know more about this set, copyright 19. 93, the Taylor Williams Baseball Card Company. Photos, courtesy of Cooperstown, New York. Cooperstown Collection. Um, I saw a uh, on eBay this set unopened in a box sells for $79.99 US. So there are some unopened boxes out there if any of you are interested that are up for sale. This one I got for Christmas when I was a child. So I opened it up pretty quickly. Now I'm going to go through some of the other checklists they have. Some interesting ones of note. This is one they did to, com to commemorate the Negro Leagues. They put together a subset within it. Here's the checklist. And they actually did a really good job in these cards. Um, Gene Benson. And they, got the, they did a little logo in the corner there. A lot of these guys, I must admit, I haven't, I've never heard of. But obviously I've heard of some of the big Negro League players like Josh Gibson and Satchel Page. Um, but these are a lot of, here's Josh Gibson right there. Just a giant guy, like he had a ton of home runs, just a crap ton of home runs. Judy Johnson, Buck Leonard. Now not all these players did go on to play in uh, the MLB. There's Satchel Page, he did. But what they did, though, in this set is they put together another checklist of Negro League players who did break through. They called it, here it is here, Barrier Breakers, 131 to 140. And here's your checklist. And for whatever reason, Robinson isn't on this. <laughs> but um, here's all the, the, the Negro League players that did break into the majors. Page, Black, Capanella, Doby, Gillum, Irvin, Jethro. Say hey kid, newcomb, and they, again these are just these are nice, like the nice black and white photo, the classic wind up. Nobody does that anymore, hey. Eh? That's just old school. Lou Capanella. Uh, a few other interesting little tidbits. Um, if you've seen League of Their Own with Tom Hanks, they put together a little set for the the All American Girls Baseball League from the 1940s and 50s. It actually existed up till 1954. I've seen the movie. I didn't realize that it lasted that long. I thought it was canceled after the war. That's when Tom Hanks said, there's no crying in baseball. Now, I've never heard of any of these, but I know there is a uh, exhibition at, or an exhibit at the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. So, kind of cool. Um, these are the only um, women baseball players I have as cards. <laughs> So, kind of interesting to throw those in there. Ted was, he had his own opinion on who what he thought made a great hitter, which is one of the reasons why he kind of disagreed with a lot of sports writers and the committees at Cooperstown. He had his own Hall of Fame called the Hitters Hall of Fame. So he went through here and he put together some players who he thought were the greatest hitters of all time. I don't know if this is in any um, order, but it very well could be because you got Ruth on the top, Gehrig, Jimmy Fox, Rogers Hornsby, Ty Cobb, Willie Mays, Ralph Kenner, Tris Speaker, and Johnny Mize. So each card has the player's nickname in the corner, the Gray Eagle, if you can guess who that is, Tris Speaker. And this explains why Ted liked them so much. From what I understand about Williams, he was a different kind of guy. He didn't get along great with reporters and the fans, so he kind of just had his own point of view. I don't blame him. The Iron Horse. Take a wild guess who that's going to be, and no, it's not Cal Ripken. Lou Gehrig, obviously, right? Lou Gehrig. Double, what's this one? Double X. That looks like Hornsby, am I correct? No, it's Jimmy Fox. Jimmy Fox. He had two X's in his name. 
Okay, what? I was born in the 80s, so I don't remember these guys. There's Ruth, obviously Ruth, right? And there he is with Ted. Look how skinny Williams was at the time, eh? And I'm a Tigers fan, so you gotta love Georgia Peach right there. Interesting thing right here, I put these two guys together. Uh, Ty Cobb, toward the, towards the end of his life, once said, the only player worth paying to see is this guy right here, Willie Mays. He loved Willie Mays. Say hey, kid. Um, they profiled, this set profiled two modern-day players, or at least modern-day at the time, Ron Gonzalez and Jeff Bagwell. These are two players who Ted was really fond of. Uh, Jeff Bagwell's in the hall. I don't know if Gonzalez is. He might be. I'd have to double-check. But they called it Donning of a Legacy. He gave you little pieces of Bagwell and Gonzalez. Talked a fair bit about them. Anyways, uh, like I said, if any of you are interested in the set or want to learn more about the history of baseball through cards, this is a, a great way to start. Um, nice little piece to, to have in your collection. Uh, there are still some unopened boxes um, selling around $70 to $80 US. Um, you can also look for some open ones. I believe they sell in the $20 to $30 range, so really not expensive at all. Um, but there are some other ones that I'm going to talk about later on in the series. I'm going to talk about the Sporty News sets. Um, another set that Upper Deck put out, kind of glorifying some of the players of yesteryear. So, a nice little walk down memory lane. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, keep on collecting.